Make no mistake, this is not just an Elise with some stickers on it. This is a properly special car. This is a first generation Elise Cup 250. It's a car I've been trying to get a drive of for quite a long time, but these are seriously rare cars. In terms of numbers made, no one knows for sure, or at least no one that's gonna actually tell me, but imagine there's probably less than 25 or 30 of them in the world. So they're kind of hard to find. Fortunately, my friend Alex at Stratton Motor Company has recently taken this car in and it's now being prepped for sale. Now the Cup 250 was until recently the ultimate version of an Elise. It's got a 250 horsepower version of the supercharged 1.8 litre Toyota engine and an awful lot of aero. The first generation car in particular has a huge amount of extra bits on the side and it just looks like a really, really aggressive little car. Now above and beyond that, this car's previous owner wanted to take this car sprint racing, but not content with having a car that just went pretty fast, he made this thing look absolutely stunning. If you're a fan of carbon, you're gonna love this. And pretty much for once in an Elise, something I'm really, really keen to show you is the interior. Now I really don't know where to start when it comes to this car's interior, so I'm just gonna talk you through it as it comes to me. Now this car's paintwork is absolutely gorgeous. You probably can't appreciate it so much on film, but it's black with a really, really strong gold fleck in it. I think it might be what Lotus call motorsport black. Now, the door's a good place to start. You've got this carbon fibre up here, which is absolutely stunning. You've got the leather with gold stitching, an Alcantara and stitched insert with the JPS logo on here. You've got these carbon door sills with Colin Chapman's signature in gold on top. You've got the gorgeous carbon fibre race seats as seen in the Exige and other things. And these are trimmed again with gold accents. This is quite reminiscent of the Exige LF1, a car that I absolutely adore. Then down here, one of the absolute highlights of the car, this Alitec shifter. This is just out of this world. Great to use, gorgeous to look at. I know this looks a little bit plasticky, it's it's stunning it's just in the flesh it's just awesome i mean i wouldn't want kids in here because stuff is going to wind up getting dropped in there but just amazing carbon here carbon here carbon here carbon here removable quick release carbon reverie steering wheel carbon instrument pod even the little rivets here i've got little bits of gold on and black tops the attention to detail is stunning you've got carbon on top carbon here you've got gold on all of the vents you've got a gold oil filler cap on the engine. You've got this big wing back here. It's maybe one of the only details I don't like about the car. It's got the little world champion rosettes for all the different constructors championships that Lotus won, um, which is sad because the last one's 1978. But this thing is just mega. Now, conveniently, when I got here this morning, the car wasn't quite ready, which gave me the opportunity to show it to you from a slightly unusual angle. Now, when you see this car from this angle, you start to appreciate not just the specific things that this car has on it, but the overall engineering that goes into making an Elise and why they're quite so special. You'll see that the car has a flat under tray, which is very important for aerodynamic purposes. Now, this car has a huge amount of carbon goodies and aero bits on it. This being the early Cup 250, it has all the extra aero, including this bit here and this bit here. This disappeared from the later 250s, and really, I think this is one of the standout features of the car, these little winglets on the side. And it means that this does produce more downforce than the later cars. Now, you can see here, nice big chunky AP Racing upgraded brakes. You've got these nice sort of J-hook style, I don't think it's quite a J-hook. You've got these little grooved discs, upgraded pads. You can see all the pipe work and stuff working its way through the car here. And you can see, of course, part of this bonded extruded aluminium tub. One of my favorite little tidbits, if you know someone with an early Aston Martin Vantage, the 4.3 in particular, lift their bonnet and you'll see on the tower, on the strut towers, the same red glue that's used on here. Now, 
Alex at Stratton has put slightly different wheels on this car, which actually suit it absolutely perfectly. They're these beautiful Lotus forged items, which are the original wheels that came on the car. It's also got the standard wing mirrors back on it. It did have some super lightweight carbon transforged items, which can be supplied with the car on request. Uh, same goes with the stickers. They're staying on it, but if you want them gone, they can be gone. Any Lotus in black and gold always looks very, very special. This one is no exception. And you can also see, although this is not the best angle for it, the massive rear wing. That is not standard. It's not as pretty as the standard item, but it's brutal and it is effective. What you can appreciate brilliantly from this angle is the massive and fairly protruding rear diffuser. This isn't just for show. Yes, it looks dead sexy with this carbon on it, but it works. It's a hell of a piece of kit. Now, the under tray's gone back on. You can just about see the engine through there, but the car's got, I believe, a Ford two to one exhaust. It's not quite a standard system, and it should sound pretty good. So now we've seen the car top and bottom. Let's see what it does. Well, the first thing that I can tell you all is that this Alitech shifter is an absolute joy to use. So precise, so direct, it really belongs in this car. If you own an older Elise or an Exige and you missed out on getting Lotus's own open shifter, which is a beautiful work of art in its own right, pick up one of these you will not be disappointed. It's every bit as good as the Lotus item, if not better. Now, a couple of oddities in this car, despite the ridiculous attention to detail in here, I mean, Craggy, even the carpet fasteners have JBS colored black and gold Lotus logos on them. The standard 25 year old Vauxhall Astra indicator stalks have remained. And they're quite far away from me because this car is equipped with this quick release reverie wheel. Now, for a little bit, I thought that the wheel was bigger than I'm used to, but actually it's not the case at all. It's just closer to me than I'm used to. However, it's very nice. As you know, I'm not a big fan of Alcantara, but it seems to suit this car somehow. Now I've got the roof off and as per popular demand, I'm not wearing sunglasses today. So you'll have to put up with my highly fashionable souvenir from my Swedish ice driving trip. Now, I'm just gonna put the windows up to try and get the wind noise down a little bit. And we're just gonna head down to some pretty great Lotus style roads in a minute. But I just wanna take the quick opportunity to point out the fact that I don't run mid-roll ads in this video. So you're not gonna be interrupted by anyone trying to sell hoovers. So if you can give me a little thumbs up, give me a like for that fact, I'd really appreciate it. Right, on with the review. The joy of a car like this is that even at modest speed, I'm doing 50 mile an hour in traffic, feels really, really special. I know the hard points are all standard, at least they're no real different to my 111R from 13 years ago, but this feels like an amazing place to be. Now, at the time of recording, this car's just going up for sale with Stratton. So if you're watching this, probably around about the time the video comes out and you want it, you best phone Alex quick, because I can't see this thing hanging around for long. If you wanted to try and buy a new Elise and do this to it, you're gonna be spending, I'd say, well over 60,000 pounds. So. I know what price this car is going to go up at and it's going to represent very, very good value for money. The car's only got three and a half thousand miles on it and I know that it was used for a variety of activities including a bit of sprint driving. One of the things I really like about the car too is that despite the fact that it looks like a really, really super hardcore spec, great care has been taken to make sure that this actually remains a very, very enjoyable road car. To that end, it still has the stereo in, as much good as that does you in an Elise, and it has aircon. 
course you've got the option of a roof, which you're not running today because, well, why would you? And although it's got Nitron aftermarket dampers, it's a perfectly supple ride in traditional Lotus fashion. It dances that fine line between handling and ride comfort like it seems nearly no other manufacturer can. Oh, the car picks up very, very strongly. We believe it may have been rematched, but the truth is that there's not a hell of a lot more to be got out of this engine. 250 horsepower from this unit is way above what it produces in standard trim. Down a road like this, there's no better car. Now I gave the Caterham back, you may have seen the review of the 420R, only about a week and a half ago. Now I'm so much more comfortable in this because there's actually room in this cabin and I have an awful lot more confidence in the car compared with the Caterham. Now it's not quite as brutally fast in gear, it doesn't feel it. And it's a little quieter than that car as well because the Caterham's got the side exit exhaust. But this feels so direct and planted, it really, really does. <laughs> this car has shift lights because the way the supercharged engine delivers its power it's all about that last 2000 rpm it's a very naturally aspirated power delivery it really picks up and it runs to that red line that's something i like about these supercharged engines a lot of turbo engines have considerably more mid-range but they then don't really like going to that red line it's just so adjustable, it's just so, so planted. Now I take it a little bit easier than normal over these railway tracks because I have no interest in damaging any of the lovely carbon bits on this car. I'm very grateful to Alex for lending it to us because he knows I've been looking for an Elise Cup 250 for ages. That was another car we were hoping to review today, it was actually the opposite end of the spectrum, is the 1.6 Elise. But they're so popular, Alex got the car in only about a fortnight ago. And by the time I arranged a date to come down and film it, the car unfortunately sold yesterday. So, you know, I was stuck with having to drive this today. Oh well, it's a tough old life sometimes, you know. How's this compare to other releases I've driven? Well, I mean, the handling is superb, but the handling in basically any Elise is brilliant. This car being pretty box fresh feels just unbelievably taut. It's just so confidence inspiring, and the ride is brilliant. If you've never driven an Elise before, stop what you're doing, stop watching YouTube videos, Find your nearest Lotus dealer, get out there, drive one. They are infinitely better than anyone gives them credit for. This road is awful. I mean, look at these road services. And this thing's just gobbling them up. It loves them. This is such a good car. The power level is just right for a B road. It's really, really pleasant. You know, it's still got a lot of pull from low down because of the supercharger, but then it revs out in a really pleasing way too. View out the front is incredibly special because you have those nice two big arches. They're absolutely gorgeous. View out the back in this car is pretty good too because I can actually see that little bit of gold venting above the engine bay and I can see that massive rear wing. Now at road speeds, I'd be lying if I told you I could feel the downforce playing a part because really, I'm not going at the speed required and the roads are just a little bit too rough. But on track, they will make a difference, an appreciable one at that. This car's just so delightful. 
Personally, I'd probably like it a little bit louder, but I suspect one of the reasons for keeping it at this kind of sensible volume is the fact that this does go on a lot of track days and of course track noise limits in the UK are very very strict. It's one of the reasons you haven't really seen any track videos from my Evora. I just can't find anywhere that will let me drive it. I run track days if you're watching this in the UK and you want to join me on a track day sometime there's a link in the description for that too but <laughs> sadly I just yeah can't take the Aurora on any of them. Now the track I use a lot at the minute is a little place called Blyton Park. It's quite short, it's about 1.6 miles. It's nice, tight, twisty and very narrow for a race circuit. This kind of car would be absolutely perfect there. It's just right. And that's one of the reasons that an Elise is such a weapon on UK roads. Since this car came out, I mean when it was released it was a small car anyway, but in the intervening 20 odd years cars have got bigger and bigger and bigger and roads haven't now the last cup product that i drove was the exige cup 430 and that thing's just a a visceral brutal experience with the noise and just the way that it goes this thing's dialed back a little bit but you can savour it that much more. If you'd like a food analogy, the Exige is more like a big 16 ounce rump steak. This one's like a 10 ounce fillet. There's not a lot of it, but damn is it good. Everything about this car just feels perfectly judged. It's just delicious. I've got complete confidence in it. This is a £50,000 car that belongs to someone else and if I bend it, I'm in serious trouble. <laughs> but it's just so nice and so well set up that I'm not going to hold back. I'm just enjoying myself so much. Everything about this car is judged just right as a road car as a weekend enjoyable road car i'm not sure lotus make anything better now the real temptation if you're looking at something like this the real temptation is going to be to get something like a used v6 exige and that's a very very different car which would I have? You know, I've got to be honest. As I already have the Evora, if I was adding a car, I think I'd have this. Because this thing is just sublime. And you know what? A Lotus is a rare car indeed. But this thing is one of a kind. I like being honest about cars. I, I really, really do. And you guys know that if there's something I don't like about cars, I'll say it. And I'm very lucky the dealers I work with, Alex, if there's something I don't like about a car, he doesn't mind. He doesn't ask me to, to go easy on the cars. <laughs> but this thing, I can barely fault it. Whoever buys this, Good choice, sir. Good choice. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a like if you didn't already. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more of lovely Lotus content. we got loads of stuff coming up this summer. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.